Today's uh, video is on identifying challenges involved in high latitude navigation. Uh, this is part of the topic of ice navigation. So if you are sailing on ships or you intend to sail on ships which would go into higher latitudes and by higher latitudes we mean latitudes north or south of say about 70 degrees uh, that would be considered as high latitude navigation. Uh, these days of course increasingly ships are uh, going towards high latitude navigation it is not the preferred route but ships have started going to high latitude navigation but before you do so you must uh, be aware of the challenges that are involved in high latitude navigation so although navigation in high latitudes is generally considered as the rarity rather than the norm the professional mariner uh, in today's times would be expected to adopt safe working practices uh, when uh, going to high latitudes the following points are discussed to provide insight to potential problem and expand on suggested main navigational points. In high latitudes, the use of meridians and parallels as a reference becomes impracticable. Ships positions are changing extremely fast with movement of the observer. All zone times meet and local time has little significance. Sunset and sunrise and periods of night and daylight become quite different if compared to the average day within middle latitudes. Navigational practice will involve polar charts which are based on air photography which usually don't have adequate control of triangulation of position. Consequently, geographic positions may also appear as being unreliable at times. Sounding and topographical features together with navigational information is scarce in the accessible parts of the polar region. Celestial observations cannot be relied upon when in the navigational seasons namely when ice conditions permit Clouds tend to hide the sun during periods of long days and short nights, due to which it may not be possible for you to obtain a celestial observation or a sextant site to calculate your position. Fog, low cloud and ice conditions generally pose continual navigational problems. Sites when only the sun is available tend to be used with a method of transferred position line. Accuracy is questionable in the upper latitudes. The use of the magnetic compass near the magnetic pole is of little value. However, it is pointed out that if the ship is swung to suit navigation of that region, then its use can be gainfully employed. Gyroscopic compasses tend to lose all directive force at the geographic poles and are subject to errors. Appropriate settings and corrections should be applied and regular checks by azimuth of celestial bodies should be made to ensure continued accuracy. Celestial observations less than 10 degrees of altitude may have to be used to plot the position or to obtain a position line using celestial bodies. Correction of these altitudes may have to come from tables employed for specific low altitudes found in your nautical almanac and should also include allowances for temperature and pressure where appropriate. Margins of error on celestial observations in pack ice could incorporate up to 4 minutes of observed error. Radio aids, radars, ARPAs, satellite and inertial navigation systems are as effective as in other parts of the world but they do have limitations in use and good seamanship practice should be should not be disregarded the use of the echo sounder should also be encouraged as necessary but it should be remembered that soundings can change abruptly and its reliability in high latitude regions becomes questionable at times a lack of tidal information prevents accurate use of dead reckoning and use odd estimation techniques. This is made more difficult because speed relative to ice is difficult. A large scale running plot should be established 
where all alteration of course points can be checked and changes in speed can be clearly noted. Finally, before I end this presentation, you must be aware that overall weather conditions in the high latitudes also change very quickly and suddenly and position fixing opportunities should be taken when presented to maintain the position of the ship on the intended track. I hope this short video was useful to understand the challenges involved in high latitude navigation and some of the precautions we may observe. I will put up more videos about high latitude navigation and ice navigation and hopefully it will help you to enhance your knowledge. Bye.